Hello, Slinkinator. This is the basic energy beam. The energy beam is the most fundamental move in slinky manipulation. It is the building block that almost all other moves are built upon. Before you can do this, or this, or this, you must first master the basic energy beam. Before we start trying this, I'm going to explain how the energy beam works. So put your slinky down and listen up. The energy beam works by tugging on one end and then the other at precisely the correct rhythm to create a wave of tension that bounces endlessly back and forth through the slinky. This tension is what will allow you to eventually draw fantastic shapes through the air with your slinky. A slinky without tension will succumb to gravity and be a sad, saggy slinky. A slinky with tension will be able to stand up to gravity and trace fantastic shapes through the air. And before we proceed, let's get clear on what a tug is. A tug is a hard, sudden pull. A pull, never a push. Pushing will not be able to generate enough tension for an energy beam. Only pulling can do that. Now, let's take a close-up look at what happens when we tug on one end of the slinky. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to demonstrate this on a table so the slinky can only move in two dimensions instead of three. When we tug on one end, unlike a normal object, the whole slinky doesn't move at once. Because the slinky is so flexible, it takes time for the force of the tug to travel through it. This creates a wave of tension where part of the slinky is compressed and part is stretched out or under tension. This wave will travel back and forth through the slinky a few times until it runs out of energy and dissipates, like ripples on the surface of a pond. Let's watch that one more time and I want you to take note of how much of the slinky is under tension. It's about a third of the slinky's length, from here to here. Remember this for later. Now, as I unpause the video, I want you to keep your eyes on this coil right here and watch what it does when the wave travels through it. Did you see it? It got pulled to the right and then back to the left, just like every other coil in the slinky. Now let's watch that one more time, a little faster, and let's count how many times the wave bounces back and forth through the slinky. Now let's repeat the experiment, except this time I'm going to tug to the left at the exact moment when the coil in my left hand is stretched as far as it can go, when the moment of maximum tension reaches my left hand. Watch and count how many times the wave bounces this time. Because the tug to the left was perfectly in sync with the wave created by the tug to the right, we added energy to the wave, allowing it to last longer before dissipating. If we keep tugging on one side and then the other at the exact correct moments, we can keep adding energy until we reach the maximum amount of energy that the slinky can hold. And as long as we keep tugging, we can keep the wave going indefinitely. Check out how much of the slinky is under tension now compared to how much was under tension when we only tugged once. It's almost the whole thing. This is what a perfect energy beam looks like. The middle part of the slinky is constantly under tension. Compression only happens at the ends. If, however, we tug to the left too early or too late, we'll create a second wave of tension that will interfere with the first one. Notice how there are multiple areas of tension and compression here. This will prevent you from reaching the maximum amount of energy that the slinky can hold and creating a smooth energy beam. You can think of this like a game of ping pong between your left hand and your right hand. The ball, in this case, represents the part of the slinky that is under the most tension, the part that is maximally stretched. This is the peak of the wave of tension. A game of ping pong for the players is made up of alternating long periods of waiting and shorter periods of action. You serve the ball to get it started, then wait for it to return to you before hitting it again. Hit, wait, hit, wait. The energy beam is just the same. You have to tug to get it started, then wait to feel the moment of maximum tension in your hand, then tug with that hand. Tug, wait, tug, wait. How long you have to wait in between tugs depends on two main factors. How long the portion of the slinky that you're not holding is, and the stiffness or flexibility of your slinky. The stiffness or flexibility of your slinky is in turn determined by how thick the coils are and the material that it's made of. Thicker coils equals more stiffness and thinner coils equals more flexibility. There is a sweet spot here. The spring I'm using is around nine centimeters tall and has around 38 coils. 
These proportions give it the perfect balance of stiffness and flexibility, which allow it to easily counteract its own weight and do flippy things like this. But the great thing about the basic energy beam is that it can be done with any slinky, plastic or metal, big or small. And because every slinky is not exactly the same, even within the same batch, you can have very minor variations in length and coil thickness. This means that every slinky has a unique rhythm that it naturally wants to move at. Yes, this means that slinkies are like people. Everyone is a perfectly unique, special snowflake, just like everyone else. This also means that while you're learning the basic energy beam, you'll want to pick one slinky to learn with and stick to that specific one so that your body can get used to its particular rhythm. Switching between different slinkies will slow down your learning process since it takes a certain amount of time to get used to a particular slinky. We're going to warm up by doing a mini version of the basic energy beam using as little force as possible. Start by gripping two or three coils on either end of the slinky. Make sure you're gripping tight enough so that it won't go flying out of your hands when we start tugging on it. The way I do this is by bringing the edge of my thumb and the first knuckle of my middle finger to the inside of the slinky, like this. Make a little rainbow, like this. Now go ahead and try the classic motion that every red-blooded American child did with a slinky. Feels nice, doesn't it? Now, I want you to slow this motion down. Slow it way down. Slower, slower. Yeah, just stop. Good. Now, I want you to do the tiniest motion physically possible that you can to get it back going again. See how small of a motion you can do while keeping it going. It's important here to get the entire length of the slinky going all the way to one side and then all the way back to the other side. See how small of a motion you can do with your hands while keeping it going all the way from one side to the other. It should not look like this. We want the whole thing to go from one side all the way to the other side. Keep playing around with this a bit. If you do it with precisely the correct rhythm, it should almost feel like the slinky is alive and moving on its own. Does it feel like that yet? If it does, great job. If it doesn't, great job. It takes some time for your hands and your brain to synchronize with the natural rhythm of the slinky. So all that matters right now is that you're trying. This feeling of the slinky being alive is what we're looking for. That's how you know you've found the natural rhythm that the slinky wants to move at. As long as you don't change the number of coils you grip, this rhythm will stay pretty much the same no matter how much energy you put into the slinky. What we just did is a baby version of the energy beam. It's an energy beam with the smallest amount of tension or energy possible. Now let's take it to the next level and do a full grown energy beam. Grip your slinky like we did before, except now take your hands about shoulder width apart. The further apart your hands are, the harder you'll have to tug on the slinky, so don't take your hands any wider than your shoulders right now. It's also important that you keep the ends flat with your palms facing up like this. This allows the coils to stack on top of each other at either end and bounce back nicely, just like with the baby energy beam. If the ends start tilting outwards, the slinky will overshoot itself like this. If the ends start tilting inwards, you'll get a sad, saggy slinky, and nobody wants that. Now, there's a couple important differences between the baby energy beam and the regular energy beam. First, you're gonna be tugging harder with the regular energy beam, but you're also going to be tugging in a different direction. Since we're trying to create a horizontal energy beam, you're gonna have to tug horizontally. In other words, your right hand will be tugging diagonally downward to the right, and your left hand will be tugging diagonally downward to the left. The hand that tugs should move slightly below the other hand. This allows the coils to stack in your hand and bounce back, so we work with gravity instead of against it. If this all sounds like a lot to remember, don't worry, we're gonna go over all of this again. If you haven't already, go ahead and start giving this a try. And remember the second principle of slinky manipulation. You are going to suck at this at first, and that's okay. Now, while you practice this, let me tell you a story. Learning the energy beam is a lot like learning how to ride a bike. When I first started learning how to ride a bike, I used training wheels at first, and that was all fine and enjoyable. 
That's like the baby energy beam we just did. But pretty soon, my parents made me start practicing without the training wheels. My dad would take me out into the backyard and push me for a while, holding the bike up straight while I tried to pedal, then he would let go, and I would fall over. We would repeat this a few times until I got sick of it, and we stopped for the day. This was frustrating, and I didn't want to do it, but once every few days or weeks, my dad would make me go out in the backyard and practice. It didn't feel like I was improving at all in between these sessions. As time went on, my little sister learned to ride before me, and so did most of the neighborhood kids who were also younger than me. Now I felt like I was behind for my age, which made it even more frustrating. It felt like I would never be able to ride a bike, and I wanted to just give up and accept my fate. But once in a while, my dad kept forcing me to try. And then one day, my dad let go of the bike, and I didn't fall over. That was one of the proudest moments of my life up to that point. It felt amazing. The whole time we were practicing up to that point, it didn't feel like I was getting any better. But that whole time, my subconscious mind was learning. And then one day, it just clicked. That's what learning the energy beam is like. Just keep practicing and eventually it will click. But don't do what I did and wait days or weeks in between practice sessions. That is a terrible strategy, and that's why I was the last kid I knew to learn how to ride a bike. You need to practice this every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. For most people, it takes at least a few hours of practice to really get the hang of the energy beam. You're building new pathways in your brain, and it takes time. I didn't even figure the energy beam out until I had been practicing for about a month. But you don't have to do all of those hours of practice in one day. It's better to practice for a little bit every day than practice for hours one day and not practice at all for a week. Now, how's that energy beam coming? Are you noticing yourself maybe getting slightly better? If so, that's awesome, great job. If not, that's also awesome, great job. Your brain is learning things whether you realize it or not. Now, we're gonna go over some of the common mistakes that people make while learning the energy beam and we'll focus on them one by one. By far, the number one mistake that people make when learning the energy beam is tugging with too fast of a rhythm. Getting good at slinky manipulation is all about timing. It's about being perfectly in sync with the natural rhythm that the slinky wants to move at. That's why my energy beam looks like this, where you can't see the individual coils anymore, and yours probably looks a little more wobbly. The way to fix this is to wait to tug on the slinky until you feel the slinky tug on your hand. Just like in a game of ping pong, you have to wait until the ball is close enough for you to hit it. With the energy beam, you have to wait until the peak of the wave of tension reaches your hand. If you tug too early, you'll create a second wave that will interfere with the first one and it will make your energy beam all sloppy. You want to tug with one hand to get it started, then wait until you feel the slinky tug on your other hand, tug with that hand, then wait till you feel the slinky tug on your other hand and tug with that hand. For the next five minutes, I want you to practice your energy beam while keeping this in mind. Make sure you're waiting to tug on the slinky until you feel the slinky tug on you. For your convenience, I'll put a timer on the screen along with a slow motion clip of the energy beam so you can remind yourself what it should look like. There will be music, but if you can, I recommend muting it and putting on some of your favorite music. Get into the flow and remember to have fun. Begin!
Welcome back, Slinkinator, and great job! You're now slightly better at the energy beam than you were five minutes ago, whether you realize it or not. Okay, now before we proceed, are your hands, wrists, or any other part of your body getting sore or tense? To prevent injury, let's take a moment right now to shake everything out and give your hands and wrists a stretch. Stick your hands out in front of you with your fingers facing up like this, and then rotate your hands like this. And bring them back. Good. And then let's bring our hands down like this and do the same thing. Stretch your hands as far as they can in one direction and then stretch them as far as they can go in the other direction. Why don't you lock your fingers together like this and then rotate your wrists back and forth just like this. And now do it in the other direction. Yeah. Also, let's take a deep breath in. Hold it and let it out. <sighs> it's important to make sure we don't get too tense while practicing. In between tugs, when you're waiting for the moment of maximum tension to reach your hand, your muscles should be relaxed like a kung fu master waiting for the right moment to strike her opponent. But unlike kung fu, this should not be painful. It's normal for your muscles to get sore and tired, but if you experience any persistent pain while practicing, Go ahead and take a break until the pain goes away. This might happen if you're practicing outside in near freezing temperatures, or if you practice for more than four hours in a single day. Remember, your health and safety are your responsibility. Now go ahead and start your energy beam again and take a look at it. When you tug, does the hand that tugs come below the other hand? If it doesn't, it should. Remember that we're not just tugging outward, but we're also tugging downward. The right hand should be tugging diagonally downward to the right, and the left hand should be tugging diagonally downward to the left. This is so that the coils can stack in your hand and bounce back. Remember, the energy beam is just an elongated version of the baby energy beam. The coils should still be falling from one hand into the other. It's just you don't notice it first because the horizontal motion is so much bigger than the vertical motion. For the next five minutes, I want you to practice while focusing on tugging downward in addition to outward. Make sure the hand doing the tug goes slightly below the other hand so that the coils can stack in your palm and bounce back. Begin!
Good work, Slinkinator. I can feel your skills increasing already. Feel free to pause the video and take a moment to stretch and rest if you need it. When you're ready, go ahead and start your energy beam again and take a look at it. Ask yourself, are the ends of your slinky flat with your palms facing up or are they starting to tilt inward or outward? Remember that your slinky will sag if the ends start to tilt inward, but you also don't want the ends to tilt outward. This will cause your slinky to overshoot itself and go all over the place. You want your ends to stay perfectly flat and horizontal so that the coils can stack on top of each other at the ends and bounce off of your palms. For the next five minutes, practice the energy beam while just focusing on keeping the ends of the slinky flat. Don't worry about anything else for now, just focus on keeping the ends flat with your palms facing up. Begin!
Great work, Slinkinator. That's 15 minutes of focused practice you've put into your energy beam so far. Again, shake out your arms and give them a little stretch if you need to. When you're ready, continue practicing the energy beam and ask yourself, how far apart are your hands? If they're further apart than your shoulders and you're still struggling, bring them closer together. Remember, the further apart your hands are, the more force you'll have to tug with and the harder it will be. As a beginner, your number one priority right now is getting perfectly in sync with the natural rhythm of your slink, not making as big of an energy beam as possible. For the next five minutes, practice while focusing on keeping your hands shoulder width apart. This will be your last practice session of this lesson. Begin!
stupendous work, Slinkinator. You've just put in 20 minutes of focused practice on the energy beam, and you're that much better than you were when you started. That is awesome, but you probably still have some practice to do in order to really master the basic energy beam and get yours looking like this. Remember, this is like learning how to ride a bike. I can tell you exactly how to do it down to the last detail, but in order to actually do it, you have to put in the practice. And just like learning to ride a bike, once you know how to do it, you will never forget. So your homework is this. From now on, I want you to take your slinky everywhere you go. If it fits, wear it on your wrist. Whenever you have an opportunity, I want you to work on your basic energy beam. Remember, anytime your hands are free is an opportunity to be practicing and improving. A huge part of the reason I got so good at slinky manipulation is because I practiced a lot at my job. I was lucky enough to have a boss who let me get away with this. Thanks, Carlissa. When there was nothing to do, I would practice, even for a few seconds at a time. I would practice on my breaks, and I would practice while I walked to lunch. Sometimes I took a train to work, and I would practice while I walked to the station. Now, kids, do not practice slinky in the classroom. Do not practice slinky on the job if you're a neurosurgeon. And do not practice slinky at a funeral. Use common sense. If you get fired for slinking off on the job, that's your fault, not mine. But when you carry your slinky with you everywhere, there are tons of opportunities to practice when you wouldn't be doing anything else. From now on, take your slinky with you everywhere and practice as much as you can. At a minimum, make sure you get at least 15 minutes of practice in each day. If you want to go for extra credit, I recommend practicing for 30 minutes a day. That's about how long I estimate that I've practiced on average per day for the first four years that I did this. It doesn't have to be all at once either. You can break it up into three 10 minute sessions or five six minute sessions or however you want. To review, make sure you wait in between tugs until you feel the slinky tug on your hand before you tug on the slinky. Make sure that the hand that is tugging goes below the other hand. Make sure that the ends of your slinky stay perfectly flat, not tilted inwards or outwards. And don't move your hands wider than shoulder width apart until your energy beam looks perfectly smooth. When I say smooth, what I mean is that the coils should be moving so fast that they appear as a blur and you can no longer see the individual coils. This only happens when you're perfectly in sync with the natural rhythm of your slinky. Once it starts to look and feel smooth, try moving your hands just a little further apart and see if you can keep it going. The further apart your hands are, the harder you'll need to pull. So start small and increase the distance just a little bit at a time. If it gets all wobbly and you can't control it, just bring your hands closer together until you can. Practice until you get it smooth and you're perfectly in sync with the natural rhythm of the slinky, then take your hands just a little further apart again. Keep pushing yourself like this as you practice, and eventually you'll be able to make an energy beam that's as wide as your arm span. When you're ready to learn something new, I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, slink on!